I'm sure there's a, a lot of materials out there, smart materials, uh, materials that at the nano level are being developed. Uh, in fact, these uh, come to the, to the discipline quite late. Uh, so uh, I'm probably not the right person to ask that question. But uh, one of the reasons that I went to MIT was in a, as a way of being able to collaborate with material scientists and begin to imagine uh, ways in which some of their work and our work can become relevant to each other. Um, but at another level, I think it has not to do so much with um, a material that's going to revolutionize uh, all, all of the industry. There are, there are going to be that. And certainly the role of composites has had a, a vast impact on the way that we think about skins, uh, structural sk uh, skins, the strength of skins, and the way that the boat building uh, enterprise, uh, airplane building, has had an impact on the way that we've in fact built uh, uh, materials and furniture and skins in our own firm has had uh, the kind of consequences that you're asking. But I think of them as very small steps, actually. And, um, and I think that uh, there's, a, there's a huge leap forward that we, we, we still await. That was possible. Uh, uh, let's say, uh, until several decades ago, where um, education and the advent of specialization had not been so, uh, in a way, um, stratified. To the degree that now uh, knowledge has been put on a rocket booster, if you like. The, the idea that different disciplines are occupying their own very distinct uh, set of research principles that are unaccessible to a larger public. It is, it is becoming more and more difficult to create uh, great generalists. So part of our challenge, I think, right now is how not to lose sight of those very disciplinary traits that characterize the core of your field on the one hand, while remaining agile and able to engage the other disciplines in such a way that you can give architectural substance to their knowledge. The problem with these other discipline groups is that they're brilliant in what they do, but they don't necessarily understand their architectural potential, nor do they understand their ability to synthesize. And only the architect is trained to think in a way to take incompatible elements and put them together into some kind of synthesis. Whether it's a difficult synthesis or a happy one is a different question. But the idea that the architect is a, a thinker and a, and a great improviser, somebody who is able to uh, uh, pick up the pieces. Uh, and, and that's sort of what I see as the next big challenge.